Hey guys, this is Matt from VMP Performance, and today we're going to show you how to hook up and wire and set up a VMP narrowband kit. You're going to need this if you've got a 2010 or older Ford that we're tuning with SCT because Ford did not put widebands in the car until 2011 and newer. So I'm going to show you how to get all this set up to minimize your headache and minimize our headache on our end. So let's get started on this. So first of all, in the narrowband kit, you're going to have the AEM wideband. You're also going to get this SCT live wire cable. We'll show you how to hook up both. We can go ahead and open this. You're going to see we have the gauge right here. We can go ahead and pull this out and unscrew this and this bracket. And we'll set that aside and we will set this aside over here. All right, next you have the wire harness for the gauge. This plugs into the back of the gauge and has both uh, the power, the ground, and the analog out. That's all you're really going to need. So we're gonna have a red wire that's gonna to go to a 12 volt switched output. We're going to have a black that goes to a good chassis ground, and we're going to have white that is an analog output to the SCT analog input. So we will set that aside. And then digging in deeper, we're going to have the wideband sensor. This is a Bosch style wideband sensor. There's a couple things about installing this uh, that's very important. The most important thing is, is that when you are installing this in the car, you do not want it level and you certainly do not want it at an upward angle. The problem for the, the reason for this is water will collect in the tip of this and it will short out the heater. So you need it at least like this, but even being horizontal is not ideal. You want it at a slight upward angle or preferably straight up and down, but if it's underneath the car, usually the floorboard will not let you do that. Also, if you have a turbo car, you're gonna to wanna to put this in the down pipe. Do not put it in the up pipe going to the turbo. The pressure will skew the reading of this. So that's gonna go in. There's not a real difference on whether it goes in the driver or passenger bank per se. It's really up to you and whatever is easiest for you. Um, so like I said, most of these people or most of these setups are going to have them installed in the H pipe or the X pipe under the car, weld in a bung, and you're good to go. These kits do also include a bung. So if your exhaust that you're using does not have a bung in it, you can drill a hole and weld that in there. Again, you want it at a slightly upward angle and weld that in and you're good to go. It also includes uh, some extra faces. Uh, if you want to match the color, the bezel's interchangeable, the face is interchangeable between black and uh, white. And the last thing in here is the actual extension harness for the wideband sensor. This end is going to plug into the gauge. You're going to run the wire through the car, under the dash, wherever you want to do, through the floorboard, it's up to you. And then the other end is going to plug into the uh, gauge itself, or the sensor itself. Keep it away from heat. Obviously, don't wanna burn the car down. Um, and then that's pretty much it. Um, there's some stickers in here, so you can blast the side of your car with it. There's instructions, don't need them, because we're showing you this video. And uh, that's about it. Okay, so let's go into a little bit more detail with this. We kind of gave you a real quick crash course on everything, but now I'm gonna show you more of the nitty gritty on how this all wires up. So you have your gauge we showed you earlier. Uh, you're going to install this wherever you really like, put it in your gauge pod, put it on the dash, whatever, they're not waterproof, don't put it outside the car. Um, pretty much, I just recommend putting it somewhere you can see them. Some places have gauge bezels, you can put them up on the pillar, wherever, this is entirely up to you. Uh, but you're gonna pick that point first so you know where you're gonna run your wiring harnesses. So the next part you're going to need is your power and ground harness for the gauge. It is going to plug into the back of the gauge. It will only go in one way. Bam, just like that. So the other end of that, as we said earlier, is going to be a power and a ground. Uh, the power is going to be 12 volt switched. Do not put it on 12 volt constant, it will kill your battery. Uh, so 12 volt switched with a ground. And again, the white is going to go to the analog input of the SCT. So once you get that handled, you're going to go back to your wideband sensor harness that we had talked about earlier. It's plugged in, welded under the car. All of that is good. You have run the wire harness up through the tunnel, through the firewall, however you needed to get it in there. Around, uh, keep it away from sharp uh, edges. 
and this end is going to plug into the back side of the gauge as well. So there. And then you're going to shove that into the hole of the gauge bezel or wherever you've got it. So now you are pretty much done with all of this part. So then the final part is you're going to take your analog cable for the SCT. Um, I have twisted these off lightly to kind of show you what you're gonna need and what you don't need. Uh, easiest thing to remember is Christmas colors, you don't need them. Uh, this is the white, the red and the green. You don't need them, tape them up, whatever. Um, the next thing is the blue and the black. These, I have these twisted together to show you that these are going to go to together onto a ground. I would recommend, highly recommend, you use the exact same ground that you grounded the gauge to. So technically all three of these are going to go to a good chassis ground. So then the last thing you have is the orange wire, which is the analog input, and the white wire, which is the analog output. These two are going to go together. So this is going to be a 12 volt switched power source. These three are going to go to a good, clean chassis ground. These two are going to connect together. So what that's going to do is that's going to take the air fuel ratio from this center. It's going to run it into the gauge. The gauge is going to convert that to a zero to five volt output, which is going to send the zero to five volt output to this cable right here, which is going to plug into your SET. That allows us over here at VMP to see what the air fuel ratio on the car is doing at driving and at wide open throttle without you having to relay the information to us manually or taking videos and things like that. We will be able to see it right on the data log. So now that we've got this far, we're going to jump over to the laptop and I'm gonna show you guys how to set up the software to record the air fuel ratio in the software. Okay, so now we're in the car and I'm gonna show you guys how to plug in the SCT, get it set up in the software and apply the equations so that you can see the air fuel ratio in the software. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna open SCT Live Link um, and then you're going to click this guide me button over here in the corner and you're going to click, I want to data log a vehicle. It's going to tell you to plug in the uh, USB port into your tool and also into your laptop. So you're gonna go ahead and plug that in. At this time, you're also gonna to wanna to plug in that cable that we showed you how to wire earlier into the top. That's your analog input. So you're gonna plug that in as well. You're going to hit next down here in the corner and then it's gonna tell you to plug it into the OBD2 port. So then you're gonna reach down, you're gonna take your OBD2 cable and you're gonna plug that into the o our OBD2 port. And you're going to click next again. Then it's gonna tell you to start engine, which you would normally start the engine. We're just doing key on right now to show you guys. So normally you would have the engine running and you will click next again. At this point in time, you're going to click this check communication. That's going to make the software talk to the tool and the car and make sure everything is all working. So you're gonna wait a few seconds and then it will pop up over here where these question marks are. There we are. So now you can see that it is talked to the serial number, what type of communication network, yada, yada. So now you're going to click vehicle info. It's gonna show you what the vehicle info is. Doesn't have to worry about anything here. Next, you're gonna click select items. So it's gonna pop up this list, your next step. Um, sometimes this pops up a big long list over here. You don't have to worry about it. Just minimize that. Um, you're going to put a check mark on that orange fire wire. Remember how we uh, wired that up to the orange wire earlier? Well, there it is. So you're gonna collect that orange fire wire and the next step is you're gonna hit load config. It'll ask you, do you wanna merge these items? You're gonna click yes. That means you wanna take the check mark from the analog input and you wanna combine it with the config file that your tuner would have sent you. Um, again, earlier in the, e uh, in the email chain, you would have been sent a file that ends in a .cf4. That is a configuration file. You wanna have saved that somewhere on your computer where you know how to use it. At this point in time, you're going to select that. 
So go ahead and select your config file and it will pop up. Uh, don't have to worry about anything else here. Next, you're gonna go to configure data log. Okay, so now we have configured the data log, we are on this screen. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over entering the formula itself. Um, keep in mind that every wideband has its own unique formula. So I'm gonna show you the formula for our AEM kit. Um, but if you have a Ballinger or a PLX or an, an autometer um, wideband, those are gonna have their own unique formulas. So you're gonna wanna look in the instructions and get the uh, formula for your wideband. But I'm gonna show you the one for ours. So you're going to go up here to tools and you're going to go to equations. So down here uh, on the orange where we had it before, um, you see where it just says voltage. So right now it's configured to just show raw voltage. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna enter in the formula. So you're going to do a parentheses. You're going to do volts times two, close parentheses, plus 10. So once you do that, um, you should be able to uh, go back here to home, go back to list, and configure data log one more time. And now when you hit record, it will show the AFR instead of a raw voltage. See, just like that. So you can see where it's showing 14.6 to one air fuel ratio. And you can see that's what it shows right here on our gauge because right now we don't have a sensor plugged in. So it shows 14.7 default. So you can see that that is now reading correctly. So now you would go drive the car, do whatever we told you to do, uh, you, whatever your tuner told you to do. And then when you stop this data log, save the data log and send it to us and it will have air fuel ratio in there along with all the other data we need to see at the same time. So that's all there really is to it. And that should help you get squared away and get you data logging. Okay, so now that we've gone over how to wire the AEM wideband in and also set it up in the software, you should be good to go for any of the data log purposes. Remember that if you have a 2010 or older Ford, I highly suggest you have this. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. It's gonna make our life a lot easier because you're not staring at a gauge and gives us an idea of what's going on. If you don't have this kit, remember that you can purchase it. The link to purchase it is in the description below. And in the meantime, check back with VMP Performance. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can always email us or call us. And remember to like, share, and subscribe.